Hi, I'm Kitty Feldy. This week we continue our conversation with writer Christina Soontornbott. Christina, why did you decide to set A Wish in the Dark, which is a fantasy adventure, in Thailand rather than in your own neighborhood where you grew up? Well, <laughs> it just it felt very new. It felt very fresh. Uh, it's Thailand is a place that to me is so vivid. It's so ripe for any kind of storytelling, whether it's realistic storytelling or fantastical storytelling. You know, I grew up reading books where every fantasy that I read was set in England or Ireland or, you know, Europe. But there's so many other places all over the world that can support a fantasy world. Um, and so it's just, it was the most it just felt right <laughs> to set the story there in every single way. So tell us a little bit about world building. How do you start? Ah, oh, I don't know. I think I just start. I think I just start and go. Um, so for A Wish in the Dark, the world building, it's all about this river. And so, you know, Bangkok, the capital of Thailand, is a city on the river. And it influences everything in the city. It's the beating heart of the city, you know, the economy, the culture, the food, um, everything about how people interact. And so that also set up the world of A Wish in the Dark. A city on a river, it's got two sides. So immediately you have a privileged side and maybe, a you know, the, the wrong side of the tracks, quote unquote, um, there's a flow, there's, you know, you can get swept away in it, you ha can have to battle it, fight, fight against it. Um, there's just so much there. So that's really where I started was just the idea of a city on the river. Is light a theme you wanted to carry throughout the book? Yes, yeah, that was very intentional. Um, and you know, that also starts from from the river. Like if you go to Bangkok at night, the city is a city of lights reflected in the river. Light is so much a part of what you sense. And, um, and it's so magical feeling. And so I just sort of had this idea of like, well, what if the light was magic? And what if one person controlled it? I mean, we think of light as being like, it belongs to everybody, but just like any commodity, you know, energy, water, it should be free for everyone. And it's what, you know, it's not here in our own world. So how about in this world, I make it where there is one man who makes it, who can make light and he does not give it uh, equally to everybody. Um, so that's sort of where that started. And then it just, it's, it's such a great metaphor, you know, light as a metaphor for compassion and love and something that can, you know, if you think about a flame, that it can start so small and grow into this big raging fire. So it's, it just fit in so many ways. <laughs> was this something that developed organically as you were writing the book? Or was it something that you like had to put on a note card pinned over your desk that said light and dark? I think it's a little bit of both for me. I'm not really... I'm not really the sort of writer that just goes like with the flow and I have no plan, but I'm also not the sort of writer that plans every sing single thing out. I think as you're writing, you know, you're going along and you're kind of working through these things as you're going and you're realizing, oh, I, if I change this, if I make it this way, it strengthens my whole theme or it, oh, it at, sets us up for a really big twist if I just make it this way. So I think part of that is discovering as you go and being open to, to all of those discoveries. At what point did you have to do some real research for the book? I mean, what was it that you needed to learn to write it? I feel like probably the biggest research I did was about um, Thai Buddhist monasteries and um, and the, the monkhood. Um, my father was a Thai monk um, for for a, a couple different times in his life, which is quite common for young men in Thailand to be a, a Buddhist monk at some point. So he was able to tell me a lot. I did other research as well. Just mostly, I think I was I was worried about you know being respectful, portraying things accurately. Um, in terms of like the world building, I, I watched a lot of old videos from the 60s and 70s of Bangkok and life on the river. That helped a lot. I was just like listening to music from that time. I was just 
watching these old videos, looking at old photos. It just, it's all about like getting myself in the mood so that I can get the reader in the mood. We have interviews with dozens of other writers at our website, bookclubforkids.org. That's also where you can hear kids from Seattle discussing the book, A Wish in the Dark. And you can find out there also how you can be on the show as well. And by the way, have you checked out our other podcast? The Fina Mendoza Mysteries is more than just a mystery story. It's a way to introduce basic civics education to elementary school students. There's curriculum and a free teacher's guide at the website, chesapeakepress.org. That's the Fina Mendoza Mysteries, wherever you listen to podcasts.